This one's for Eddie. Cheers. Invisible for me. Clink. Yep. <laughs> Rest in peace. Rock and roll legend in my book forever. Imagine I just chugged the whole thing. <laughs> That'd be impressive, honestly. She might. No, she'd uh-huh. probably vomit. We are an unusual couple, you know. How goes it? Pretty good. We've seen Stranger Things 4. Unfortunately, and we it's, have. And it's come and gone, so now we have to wait two years, unfortunately. But, hey, it was a hell of a ride. <laughs> unfortunately, we have seen Volume 2. Yeah. I wish I hadn't. I missed the time when I had not yet laid my eyes upon Volume 2 of Stranger Things. I was happier. Everything in my life was just better. You were in a better mental place, yeah. Yeah. Uh, spoilers for Volume 2 of Stranger yeah. Things. But, uh, yeah, they killed off my two favorite characters, so that was really cool. Yeah, this is a spoiler dive into Stranger Things 4, by the way. Maybe some speculation looking ahead. Um, that's what we're doing today. Mm-hmm. If you're returning... Thank you. If you're new, thank you. Word. And hit the like button if you're on the video version. Comment your thoughts, your predictions, your uh, reaction to everything. And leave a nice review on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. I'm in mourning. If any of you are sub to me on YouTube, you saw my reaction. Or if you're sub to Chris, you saw both of our reactions this is true. too. Yep, yep. Um, did you see that we got put into a really big YouTube compilation? I did. That was cool. That was yeah. really cool. It was like, I was like, of course, it's the segment where I'm like violently sobbing <laughs> over Eddie and Max. Um... Should we just get right into it and talk about their deaths? You might as well. Dude. No point in dilly-dallying. It was fucking gr- gr- gruesome and hard to watch. Brutal deaths. It was like, here's the thing. They made Eddie so fucking sad, right? And you're like, oh, oh no. And then like 15 seconds later, mm, sorry, Max is also dead. And guess what? It's going to be just as sad because she's going to be dying in Lucas's arms. Ugh! It's the, it's... The whiplash it gave me was the equivalent of like when you're watching Spider-Man No Way Home and within like five minutes you go from Aunt May dying to like, surprise, Andrew's, Andrew and Toby are here. That's like the exact same whiplash I got. It was like, boom, psh, Eddie. It's like the TikTok boom, audio, psh, yeah. Max. It's that TikTok audio. <laughs> what? The one where it's like um, the voices in the background like, bah, bah, da, bah, da, and then it goes, psh. it's like punching oh, one thing right. and then punching oh, the other. Oh, that's a good TikTok idea. Yeah. You should make it. Oh, I need to write that down. Remind me after this. Trade I'll try and remember. Write it down right now as we speak. And my, my notepad's all your the way phone. there. Go to your notes. <laughs> Go to your notes. And while you do that, I'll say, yes, we both have reaction videos on our channel. Tears were shed. And uh, I want to say something before we continue the conversation. The amount of people who were just in, I guess, haven't been exposed to real emotional situations and don't realize that everyone processes emotions differently because if you watch our reaction video there's people who comment and are like this dude's not even crying this bro's just sitting there fucking straight faced it's like first of all i am there are tears in my eyes you can to see be tears. fair if you put anyone in the world next to her when something happens that person's gonna look like they're fucking up, uh, picking, getting their passport picking photo taken like this compared to her <laughs> this is true i will say in like i can i can Be a witness. When I looked over at Chris during Eddie's death, I saw tears in his eyes. And I was shocked. Because I didn't expect you to cry. I didn't expect you to get emotional at all. And you did. And I was very impressed. Yeah, I did. I'm just like a quiet emotional person. Like soaking it in. What's that like? (laughs) There's nothing wrong with that. I think people are just like, bro, he's not even crying, dude. The fuck? It's like. (laughs) What's that like? (laughs) That person who commented that's just insecure about their emotions probably. Could not be me. I can't even like when i was editing like my reaction like i couldn't even do it without crying couldn't watch my like make my tiktok clips without crying i can't watch i've been able to watch max's death without crying now but every time i watch eddie's it's just uh, another knife in my chest for sure that's how it makes me feel yeah sad it is sad yeah and then they did max dirty arguably twice because they killed her and then just kidding she's not dead she's just paralyzed and blind and in a coma and a possibly brain dead so arguably worse than what eddie had because at least eddie might be dead for except real, for for, real except for the fact that eddie's literally so alive it's not even funny go into that please okay so i actually i have a theory about eddie and i have a theory about max should we do my eddie theory first go for both which one first eddie either one 
I don't really. Okay, yeah, we'll do Eddie first. So there's a couple of theories speculating around, but this is my personal theory that I came up with on my own. I literally came up with it today on the drive home from Chris's house. And here it is. So in episode eight, I believe, we see Sam Owens in the Nina facility calling that agent woman. He's like, hey, blah, 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 blah. Also, like, go to Mac. Can you go to Max Mayfield's house and check up on her and her friends? Because Eleven thinks she's in trouble. So, in that two-day time jump, we missed a lot. We have no idea how or if they got Eddie out of the Upside Down. We have no idea how the rest of them got out of the Upside Down. We have no idea if any of them mourned Eddie's death. Nothing. And so, here's what I think. I think that, first of all, we we didn't technically see him have a final breath. We saw him kind of go like, whoa, whoa is me. But like, he could have just passed out from blood loss, your honor. It doesn't necessarily mean he died. So they get him out of the upside down. And like, while they're going through this whole commotion of trying to drag a limp, a limp, lifeless body, like out of the upside down, this agent woman could have been at Max's house and she like hears the commotion over at Eddie's. So she like goes across the street and she's like, what's going on over here? And they're like, we're trying to save our friend. Like, He's about to die. This Asian lady takes Eddie and is like, I got you. We'll take him to one of our many top secret government agent facilities. And that explains why no one was mourning his death after two days. Like every, That's why everyone was fine. It was never touched on. Nothing. No funeral. Nothing. The only person that acknowledged his death is Dustin. And it would explain why... He has to tell his uncle that he's dead because the thing is, is Eddie's still a wanted man for murder. So like until his name can fully be cleared, like they, Dustin had to lie to Eddie's uncle telling him that he's dead because they needed his uncle to stop looking for him. Because if he kept looking for him, it would have just caused a bunch of problems and all that stuff. But the reason like he's crying is because like he feels bad that he has to like tell his uncle this information when it's not true. And he knows how much it's going to hurt him because he himself experienced Eddie air quote dying or what he thought was him dying and that's why you know all the kids are literally fine because they all know that eddie is healing in a government agent facility i mean you only the only thing about that that would make sense to me is the fact that you a point you made about how this show has brought characters back before when they seem to have more brutal deaths so word so that's the only thing like hopper could, should have 100 percent died and yeah d- and brenner as well because if exactly so i knew we all knew that they were bringing back hopper like that yeah. wasn't a surprise bringing back brenner though was a shock like brenner got attacked by a demogorgon and to our knowledge demogorgons are far more lethal than demo bats like you know what i mean they could easily write it in like they haven't decided yet if he's going to come back but they That's could write I'm it saying. in if they want like sure it's a little bit of like a stretched theory but yeah. like if the duffer brothers wanted to bring eddie back which honestly i think they'd be stupid not to like the duffer brothers said that they regretted killing off chrissy yeah after seeing how much chemistry eddie and chrissy had together in that scene in the forest and if they regretted killing off chrissy i cannot imagine what they feel after killing off eddie because, like, the fan reaction to Eddie was, like, as strong, if not stronger, than the fan reaction was initially to Steve Harrington. Because it took a co- people a couple of seasons to, like, really, really like Steve. No, yeah, that's but, true. But, like, the fan reaction to Eddie was off the charts. It was. And, you know... It was nothing compared to Billy. Fact. And keep talking. I forgot what I was going to say. Sorry. I'll think of it. You're good. And, like, so if they can bring Brenner back, surviving a Demogorgon attack, if they can bring back um hopper after we see in season three literally everybody that was in that room got disintegrated like fully disintegrated but uh hopper jumping down one level saved his life okay question mark um and if if barbara can weasel her way into every goddamn season of stranger things then they can bring back eddie and i think that they i genuinely think that they should like no matter what capacity it's in whether it's they actually bring him back to life he didn't actually die um he's a figment of justin's imagination like whatever it is i genuinely think they would be so 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 stupid to not bring back eddie with the reaction that he got yeah i was gonna say something along the lines of like eddie compared to like hopper's death the fact is hopper we kind of got teased in the post-credit scene mm-hmm. they were like the not the american but like in this one 
it would hit different seeing him be alive because imagine you know this is like the equivalent to in game of thrones when they kill off a character and that character's dead and you go into the off season and then they somehow come back later like John that's Snow? yeah or like the hound or something that's what it would feel like mm-hmm. it's like you see a character die and mm-hmm. then they come back like because i mean you know what actually spoilers for game of thrones the hound was my favorite character in the show mm-hmm. he literally got thrown from a cliff and his legs were done and he was like stabbed exactly and he just was like leave me here to die and then he wasn't there for a full season and then midway through season six uh he like as you see someone uh-huh. with a limp approach and then he like that was one of the hypest moments it uh-huh. would have to be a cold open to an episode and it would be along the lines well, of like we're in the upside down and it says it like is? it's a flashback it says like however many mm-hmm. days or years later and it's like Eddie living and it's like mid season and then he comes back for like the finale or something. You know what it is? It's so season three happened, the finale happened and then we got that post credit scene and when in the post credit scene, they're like, not the American. Everyone and their mother was like, okay, that's Hopper. Duh. Like it's just like, why? Well, who else would it be? Why else would they show us that it's Hopper? And then a year after season three came out, YouTube posted this like cute little Correct. one minute teaser video and it was like, a slow zoom in of russia and it was hopper and if you go and look at that youtube video every single comment is like we knew this everyone the top comments like netflix is more shocked that he's alive than we are it's it would be like if they never gave us that post credit scene and we all genuinely were under the impression that hopper was dead correct and then they release that youtube video yep. everyone would be like whole i look at my arm i have goosebumps because of it yeah whole everyone would be like holy fucking shit hopper is alive It'd be like that. They should do that with Eddie. Give me a nice 30 second YouTube video. Cold open. Um, Twilight Breaking Dawn part one style. Zoom in on the eyes. And she just goes, not she, he, he goes, <gasps> and Eddie's alive. Yeah, that Boom. Cool. That's what I like to see. That's what would need to happen. He yeah. wakes up in a hospital. I, I, I made a pitch saying imagine that was the first trailer. But in that video, I also said it would be cool if it was just the cold open of the show. Because, like, I normally get... Or an episode. I normally get irritated when they kill a character and then, like, bring them back to life. But it's... I get... It's less irritated if it's in the way that, like, Game of Thrones does it, where it's, like, you think they're dead for a while and then they come back. I got irritated when they did that with Max because it was, like, a quick, like, five-minute turnaround. Like, she was dead for, like, a minute. Literally. Yeah, I want to say, like, let's talk about that because I love, like... Well, this let me sh- wrap up my Eddie thought first. Sorry. I, it's pretty much up. but like if they were to bring eddie back in season five like i would not be angry in the slightest and it wouldn't it wouldn't like make his death any sadder to me so talking about max yes. um, <laughs> i think that yeah what they did i don't really like because kind of annoying it was like an emotional moment where she was dead and then 11 was like no and then she just is brought back to life and no. and we haven't really seen that type of ability from 11 thus far in the show so it's just like obviously the duffer brothers can write whatever they want like that's up to them they're the showrunners and, and the writers but like it seemed a little cold feetish of them to be like oh we're gonna they, we have a draft of the script we're gonna kill max but ah, that would probably piss off the fans so you know what Let's just rec- let's just re- let's change the script real quick so where Eleven brings her back. I feel like there has to be a reason that she's alive. There probably is. They don't know yet, but they're going to write it. And this could be <laughs> my next theory. Shall I continue? Yes. Okay. So here's my Max theory. So Max, as we know it, her bones were cracked in her eyes. She's blind. Bones can heal, so she can easily probably walk around by the time that she's healed. But the issue is her blindness. And here's the thing. In episode eight, we hear, we hear Brenner talking about Henry and he explains like he's like when Henry kills, he doesn't just kill. He consumes. So when someone's getting Vecna, they're not just being killed. Vecna is like consuming them and everything they are and everything they ever will be. So when Max was getting Vecna, Vecna was consuming her, but she only got like 75 percent Vecna. So only a part of her got consumed. That being said. I think there has to be a reason that they kept her alive. So I feel like halfway through the season or something, or maybe at the beginning of the season, like whatever it may be, she's going to wake up from her coma and she's going to be blind, but she's not going to be blind and like see nothing like normal blind people do. I think she's going to be able to like see what Vecna sees and she's going to be an asset to the group or something along those lines. And then eventually when they do kill Vecna, because I'm going to assume that the season will end in them fully killing Vecna. When they do that, like the part of her that he's consumed will be released back to her and she'll be fine and she'll get a happy ending and everything will be okay. 
That'd be cool to see for sure. I just think she has to be alive for a certain reason. Like it can't just be for nothing. The dumbest thing they could do would be to um, kill her. Kill her in the off season, <laughs> like, <laughs> and it's just like the opening of the show is her funeral. Like, why not just keep her dead? Or at any point in the show, she just dies, um, like in the hospital. That would be just so stupid to me. That would make me really upset. It would be the Peggy Carter thing for Marvel. Not really, but like, it'd be like if a character dies in the hospital and it motivates a character to make a decision or something midway through the season. Like, they have to go to their movie date, respectfully. Would you rather see that or Hopper and Joyce's date? I would rather see Hopper and Joyce's date. Max and Lucas. That's, they're my, so, that's actually uh, like an L. They're my favorite couple. Okay. I mean, you know, you're allowed to have the opinion. But like, <laughs> but like Hopper and Joyce were planning this date okay. from the beginning of season three. And they could have gone on the date, but Joyce like f- skipped out on yeah, it. Yeah, she was trying so. to figure out something that was wrong in Hawkins. Okay, but that's whose fault. I'm just saying like Max and Lucas went to the movies a lot. Hopper and Joyce have never even had that real date. So it's more impactful. Okay, that's, that's but more, Hopper, that's more Hopper important and Joyce are together and alive right now. Okay. Nothing is at stake for them currently. Okay. They're fine. They're right together. Now. Yeah. They don't need to go on a date. Yeah, um, they do. Max and Lucas broke up, unfortunately, and they never had a chance to get back together and they never had a chance to proclaim their love for each other before she was brutally injured. She was killed and then brought back by Eleven's force powers that you said. And it's, and it's, <laughs> you said that in our it's reaction or something. It's more force tragic. Healing. It's more tragic because they're kids. I'd argue. They're children. I'd argue that it's more that Hopper and Joyce need to be happier because they're getting older in life. Like no. they, yeah, no. Caleb yeah. McLaughlin literally did an interview today and he was talking about it and he was like, "It's really traumatizing for Lucas because in his mind, like, there's only one girl for him and that girl is Max, and he can't even conceive of a future without her in it. So he's gonna go through a lot with her yeah. being in a coma." Yeah. Word. Yeah, love that's Caleb. Tragic. So true, Caleb. You know who else has been through tragedy? And I'm not going to argue because it's both our opinions. Joyce Byers. <laughs> She's true. finally found a man for herself. A man a he man. is. Mm-mm-mm. A daddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hated that. Father Hopper. He is a man. <laughs> new, new Hopper dropped. Mm, new Hopper <laughs> From the dropped. track. We have to reference the tracks every time for those who don't know. Uh, pretty much honestly. it. We talk about pretty much it, I feel like, in every commentary <laughs> track. track. Not commentary track. Holy shit, this is a podcast. Yeah, this is. is not a commentary track. I'm no. a dumb. We should do commentary tracks. We could. 100% for something. We could. We easily could. We just need to find a, a way must. to... We need to find a way to just record on my computer. What else happened in the finale? Oh, Will is gay. Pretty much confirmed. Yeah. He hasn't, like, fully come out yet, but, like, also, do we really expect that to happen from a boy that lives in the 80s in, like, Indiana? You know what I mean? Yeah, sorry, I'm really thirsty right now. Yeah, I can tell. Um, had a lot of sodium today, and um, I hate the way Chris drinks water. In case you guys didn't God know it, help us. I critique it every time he does it. Yeah. He drinks it like he hasn't it's had like water. A, it's borderline. You abuse. drink it like you drink water like you haven't had water in 17 years, and it's weird. It tastes good to me in my cells. I need it. Oh, it's so weird. Like I love though. hydration. Yeah, but I you love don't need water. to do it so aggressively. I mean, I'm not. Like that's the thing. Anyway. No. Yeah. No. You do drink water aggressively. Just admit okay. it. No, it depends on how thirsty I am. Uh huh. Okay. You think that a noise made by a straw <laughs> it's called you? You should know about science. Uh, air and water and all these different things. It makes a noise. And the yeah, ice, that sounds like science to me. Um, what else happened? Oh, <laughs> Jonathan did jack shit this season, dude. Like I had some time to think about it. Argyle did more than Jonathan did. I like Argyle provided a comedic relief. B, the pizza place for the deprivation tank argyle did way more so yeah i think argyle had more of an important role than jonathan this season he actually made the salt tub and jonathan just kind of lied his way through the season like jonathan he, didn't he, do he bummed his way through the season all jonathan did was lie to nancy um say that he thinks nancy would give up her life goals to go to community college with him and then lied to nancy's face but also I'm kind of sick of them pushing the love triangle agenda. Sorry, I have the hiccups right now. I can tell. I have the hiccups right now. And there's nothing else I can do about God it. God help us. <laughs> it's like having a toddler. Get rid of them. Please continue what you were saying. I finished my statement. I, was I didn't hear you. I was hiccuping. Oh, my God. I said I'm really sick of them pushing the love triangle agenda with Nancy, Jonathan, and Steve. Okay. Stan, or Jancy right now. No, like ne- neither of them at this point. Okay. Who deserves the best of the Nancy three? and her gun is my favorite ship. 
Oh my god. How many other bodily functions are you gonna have today? <laughs> I don't you've know. burped, you've hiccuped, you've sneezed. Yeah. Are you gonna fart? No, I'd prefer not to. Okay, good. Yeah. That'd be preferred not to. I seven. just I like I don't want Nancy to be with either of them at this rate, respectfully though. Um yeah, I mean, I'm excited to see Robin's relationship with uh, Vicky explored. Isn't that an interesting aspect? I feel like Cam wants Robin to get lynched. Whoa, you can't say that when she's a lesbian. <laughs> no, I say it. it has nothing to do with that. I feel like you hate her guts. I do not. Yeah. I don't like Vicky. Every time I bring her up, I... she goes, this is what no. she does, ready? I bring up Robin, she goes. No, that's not true. Is she even in your top 15 characters? She was literally in my top four before the season okay, finished okay. she went down i love her she's she a went bit down lower for me too because I, I don't like how she's written this season um but no it has nothing to do with her i don't like vicky like i don't know vicky just doesn't i don't know it just gives me weird energy like i feel like robin needs someone different from her and vicky is just like a carbon copy paste of her and it's just not giving me it's not giving me the right energy you know what i mean yeah yeah also vicky doesn't deserve robin in my opinion Interesting. And also, back on topic of Steve and Nancy, I uh, I don't think that Nancy should be with Jonathan. I think Nancy deserves much better than Jonathan at this point, or Jonathan needs to just get his shit together. Um, but when it comes to Steve and Nancy, it's not that I don't think... I think Steve needs to find someone that loves him. Like, I get that he loves Nancy and in his head, like, in his visions, like, it's Nancy with him and it's Nancy that he's marrying. But, like, for the love of Christ alive, you need to move on and find somebody that actually loves you because, respectfully, Nancy never did and she probably never will. Damn. Like, that's the whole reason they broke up was because she could not tell him that she loved him because she didn't. She liked him. She thought he was cute like we all do. But she never loved Steve. And I think Steve deserves someone that loves him. I think she's incapable him. of love. No, because she loves Jonathan. Eh, does she? She does. Unfortunately. I guess she does. For some fucking reason. <laughs> <laughs> she's capable of love, I think. Just not the she right is. person. <laughs> she loves Jonathan. And the issue Why? is... Good fucking question. Beats me. It makes me sick. Me. It makes me sick. I think... I don't get it. I think she loves him because they're like trauma besties i'm not i'm not sure I feel like they both just went through traumatic experiences and because of that they got together i guess so i don't know but like i don't know when it comes to steve and nancy i just think steve needs to find somebody that actually loves him i want to do a segment real quick and stop settling yeah steve deserves the best in the world in my opinion he deserves to have a family with six kids i think eddie deserves the best in the world well <laughs> um, I want to do a segment real quick. I I made a TikTok on this, but I want to talk about it. All right, go on. Let's talk about the top five couples in Stranger Things. Lou Max, Jopper, Jopper. So it's got to be Jopper. Nope, it's got to be Lou Max. This is in no order. This is the top five. Oh, Jopper, Lou Max, Jopper. Sure, Stancy. <laughs> I'm not a Malevin person. Is that Mike and Eleven? I don't. I honestly would. Are we put doing like five. relationships, like romantic, or are we doing relationships like couples, 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 couples? Um, me and Eddie. Okay. You and Steve. Okay. <laughs> me and Hopper. Yeah. <laughs> um, Dustin and Susie. Doozy. Mm, that's I'd, up there. Yeah. I yeah, put yeah. them up yep. there. Let's just list out our options real quick. Will and what? <laughs> His paintbrush. <laughs> <laughs> um. You have Jonathan and Nancy, Steve and Nancy, Mike and Hopper 11. and Joyce, Bob and Joyce. Uh, yeah. Mike and Eleven, Lucas and Max, uh-huh. Susie and Dustin, um, mm. Barb in the pool. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that was funny. Barb in her weekly cameo, or her season um, cameo. Yeah, I don't know. If, we, if that's all we got, that's all we got. What was your top five? Uh, my top five was, I think, Bob and Joyce. Word. Uh, Susie and Dustin. Word. Stancy, Jopper, Lumex. Word, word, word. I'd say, yeah. Not in that order, but those would be. No, yeah, for sure. I'd put those same, those same probably. Those are like the only options. Like, the thing about Malevin is that I like Eleven. I don't like her when she's with Mike. (laughs) Yeah. Like, Mike is just, his only goal as a character since season two has been to be obsessed with Eleven, and it's like really, really digressing Mm -hmm. him as a human being. Yeah. 
and it needs to be stopped immediately. Mike, do you think Mike is redeemed fully? No. A lot of people are saying he is, and I no. don't. I don't think he's fully redeemed. I think he's, he's redeemed in his relationship with Eleven. But he also said in front of his air quote best friend that my life started the day you essentially disappeared and died. Yeah. Like he sucks. High key, like Jonathan is better than Mike, though. I don't know. They're both mm. like they both had those slight redeeming moments. Like Jonathan and Will had a great moment. Jonathan is better than Mike. Like Jonathan <laughs> is a good brother at least. I haven't yeah. seen Mike talk to Nancy in years. <laughs> Mike's bit regressed since season one. Like every the season he gets worse. Mike, Mike season one, Mike would do anything for his friends. Anything. His friends. He was that, the heart. That includes Eleven, but his friend also. Season two and season three, Mike didn't even He's give such a, a jealous hoe in season two. He didn't give a fuck about where Dustin was. Remember how was jealous he was in time? season two of Max? Yeah. God. He like did not want her in the party. He was like, I don't want another girl in the party. And it's like, okay, she's not going to fucking start to date you just because she's there, you weird freak. Like, you're so annoying. This season, he very much was like, I don't care about anything. No, of course He's not. Like, oh, cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah, cool. Yeah. Yeah. And like... <laughs> The scene where him and Will are talking in the car, and then Will just goes like this, and he's like, he's like violently, really? he's violently sobbing to the side, and then this is Mike. I saw a meme yeah. of like a thumb with like <laughs> a, with, a, with like a wig on it. It was like, like how could Mike's Mike... POV <laughs> during the scene? He's like, yeah, that tweet is. It's like how could Mike even tell that he was crying? This is literally what he was looking at the whole time. Yeah, it was like a thumb. <laughs> um, but like Mike just only cares about Eleven and like him being a good boyfriend to Eleven and him telling Eleven that he loves her like sure go off King be a good boyfriend but also you still suck and you're still ignoring your friends and like you still don't care about them like we didn't even see him hug Dustin when they got home like he just hugged his mom yeah brutal I hope I want an exact equivalent of season one in season five but instead of Will not being a part of the group I want Mike to be gone wow I think they all need to be around so they can grow and like come together and it, it, it'll be epic. It'll be interesting to see because if Max doesn't wake up from her coma, it'll be it. Well, no, even if Max does wake up from her coma, we've never had like the whole group dynamic Never. where it's the four boys are all there and Eleven's there and Max is there. Never. Because in season two, we had all four boys, but Eleven wasn't there. Season, and Will was like half possessed. Season three, Dustin Eleven, was, Dustin, Dustin was, was, was like not there at yeah. all. So it wasn't the, the full group. And four, they were across the globe. Pretty much. And four, they were splattered yeah, all across the were, world. Yeah. So I have a really <sighs> interesting question to ask you. I know your answer. I don't know my answer, but Go it's just it. fun to kind of discuss for a few minutes. Uh, Steve and Eddie. Excuse me. Steven. <laughs> I already fucked up. Steve. My answer is yes. <laughs> Steve and Dustin or Eddie and Dustin? Eddie as and a Dustin. Duo. Okay. I mean, I think Eddie and Dustin's better. But Stephen Dustin really mean, will be, uh, after season five, Stephen Dustin will be the number one answer again. And right uh, now, mm-mm. it could be recency bias. It could be the fact that they have the brotherhood, the bro- like the blood brotherhood, it feels like, between the two of them. Because, again, this is what Eddie does for the video viewers. Ready? He looks at him like this with all this hope, and he goes, I never change, Dustin Anderson. And he kind of looks at him with all this hope. Promise me. <laughs> he grabs him like that, yeah. And like Dustin's like, oh, okay. And then Dustin's holding his dead body no, and crying. He goes, wasn't planning on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's sad. It's sad. And like the thing about Steve and Dustin, as Cam mourns, is um, they are great and like they're cute and I love them. But they're opposites. But Steve gives him such great advice too. Dustin, I mean, Eddie could give him that advice. No, I'm not. Yeah, it's just like they're... We've had more seasons of them. Like, yeah, they've taken a back seat. But I feel like in season five, we're going to see Steve really be there for him. I just think Dustin and Eddie have so much more in common. And, like, yeah, I think Dustin... They're in Hellfire together. Dustin had the ability to... Like, I think Steve is more of a friend to Dustin, whereas Eddie was more of, like, a mentor to Dustin. And I think Dustin really, really, really looked up to Eddie. He looked like, up to both, though. You know what I mean? I know, but, like, I'm, I think he looked up to Eddie a little bit more. Because as much as he... I'm saying as much as he loves Steve, like, Steve is... I think his friend first in many ways. Like I think in season two, he looked up to Steve because he wanted girl advice. Mm -hmm. I think, but that girl advice didn't really work out for him. Yeah. yeah. So in season three, we see him being friends with Steve, where they go with the whatever the fuck. And I think when it comes to Eddie, he looked up to Eddie because they have so much in common. And like Dustin is this weird, freaky little dork of a kid who just doesn't fit in, and he probably never will because he's just he's just dustin henderson yeah and steve like is steve the hair harrington 
And like, no matter how much he tries, like Steve will never have that, that part, regardless of like being a nerd or whatever, like he'll never have that in common with Dustin because Steve just fit in because everyone just loved Steve so much. Like Steve was on the basketball team. Like everyone liked Steve. Right. Yeah. But when it comes to Eddie, like Eddie, people didn't like Eddie because they thought Eddie was a freak and Eddie was okay with that. And he taught Dustin that it's okay to be okay with that. And it's just really important for Dustin. To- <laughs> we lost her mid up, mid up, gone. Yeah, they're both great duos. I think that, I think- again, that brotherhood relationship is between Dustin and Eddie. I still think we're going to see Steve be like the big brother to him in season five. I have a hot take. And I think that one of them is going to die and that's going to be ha- very sad. I think we should, first of all, on that topic, I think we should be extremely concerned because with Eddie's death, now Steve dying in Dustin's arms is no longer a possibility. They can't repeat that because they've already done it with Eddie. So we should all be concerned for Dustin's well-being. As a group in season five, we should all be concerned. Imagine Joe Curie's acting if he's holding Dustin as Dustin dies. Imagine Dustin's acting. That would be very like I that I, would be, that would be most... uncalled for. <laughs> I'd actually be I'd turn off the screen. I'd be pissed. I'd be like how absolutely you can't. That would be the most like You could kill any That would be kid. like Tom uh excuse me, Tom Holland. Uh please Mr. Stark. I don't That's literally what it would be like. And that would be so oh hard to see. Oh my god. They can't kill Dustin. No. Like that that would just be like that's like animal cruelty. No, yeah, he's like the safest character in the show to me. He's like a precious little like think you about You want to talk about a sad death? Think of that scene in uh season 1 where he's like giving Nancy the pizza and his little smile. Save You're going to kill that? Yeah. You're going to kill that? <laughs> Brutal. Disrespectful. You know who they are going to kill? Who? Hopper or Eleven. I don't understand when you're like obsession with thinking Hopper's going to die. I don't want him to, but like can you hear me out on it, please? I don't can hear you, but I'm yeah. not going to believe you. First of all, I think Hopper and Joyce deserve to settle down. But I don't know if Eleven gets a happy ending because, again, the world got turned upside down with her arrival, essentially. And She's got to die. And I so feel. she kind of has to go. But there's also, like, the trope of Hopper already lost one daughter. He doesn't want to lose another. So yeah, but, like, he, he, can't, her, but... he can't just sacrifice what himself if, what if really really now because he has Joyce. Can you listen to me? I'm listening to you. We are discussing. You could say the same thing about Tony Stark in Avengers Endgame. Well, now he had he had a life. He had five years to live that life. What if Hopper has a few years in between seasons to live? Sacrificing with yourself for a girl that you've known for three years, sacrificing well, yourself for the entire world. Well, Missy, we haven't seen the plot play out yet. So what if she? What if her dying? What if her like? I'm saying the fate of the world could you be just on the line Missy? with her. Yeah, Missy. <laughs> Damn. You uh, haven't seen the plot. What if she, what if it comes down to one of them for the fate of the universe? I don't think it will. Okay. Okay, you know let's talk I, about this then. Is no. anyone going to die in season five? You know, Fuck it. Is sh- anyone going to die? You know what I can see him Please, do though? Please, tell me. It's not Eleven who's in danger. It's Will. And he sacrifices himself for his woman's child. Oh. I can see that interesting. happening. Interesting. I can see that I happening. I see Jonathan sacrificing himself for He's Will. not worth it. <laughs> He would be, though. He's not worth Here's it. Here's why. Here's why. Multiple reasons, and everyone I want to hear it out. Number one, we had that scene where it strengthened Jonathan Will's relationship, so Jonathan can make the sacrifice play. Number two, it would be sad for Joyce. It would make Hopper have to be there for him. And number and above all else, Nancy would be mourning, and who would be there to help? Oh, you're just... Dis- get your Steve. hand off my thigh. You're disgusting. <laughs> you're a pig. Oh, Jesus Christ. It, that's the equivalent of uh, Topper coming to Sarah Cameron's aid when well, her like, dad <laughs> when you said Topper I was like who ships with Hopper I was like <laughs> is there a T character that I missed is there some ship I missed it's the equivalent of Topper going to comfort Sarah Cameron when her dad blows up in the in the ship Topper bro long story short when it comes to Stranger Things I'm crushed and I don't know how I'm gonna watch the show again because like I rewatched I think I said this last episode but I'll say it again I rewatched season three with some of my friends the other day and like as we were watching the finale, like I was physically feeling the absence of the character of Eddie. Like, oh Jesus Christ! I told you that. You didn't. Oh well, okay. Well, I could. <laughs> like we're watching the finale, and I'm like, I just it just feels screw screw seasons one through three. Honestly, fuck burn them. I agree. They're just shit, right? And, <laughs> I'm being fuck. sarcastic. Stranger Things seasons one through three and season four episode nine. Fuck them. Well, the later half of <laughs> episode delusion. nine. I think you're delu- I think you're delusional, <laughs> respectfully. And I, I also just think he's such I know a good you're character. kidding, but like I also think that um 
I just I you I, just don't know what it's, it's a, like. Well, no, it's like it's been since May twenty eighth. It's like July fourth right now. Yeah. Independence Day. Yeah. And you are like, it's like he he just fuck everyone else already. It's like I just don't get that. That's just like a fast love. <laughs> like that makes no sense to me. Like out of the nowhere. Okay. Like the disregard for the other seasons and the character. It's like I it's fine kidding. and you're allowed to have it, but it's like I'm wow, kidding. that was fast. I'm not actually disregarding the other seasons. I am saying though, I will feel his loss for sure in season five. No, yeah, it's sad, but like in retrospect, like he was introduced to it. be he was introduced to be killed. You just don't get it. He was introduced to be you killed. You just don't get it. Eddie is a character for people that just simply did not fit in in middle school and high school, and you just don't get it. Okay. Okay. I like him a lot. He's in my top ten. I know he is, but you just it's just not the same. Like you don't have that connection. You weren't bullied. You were? I tell you this all the time. You know I was. Okay. He doesn't believe me. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't believe me like his friends weren't literally the ones that bullied me in middle school. I don't even know who you're talking about. You know exactly who you're talking about. You know exactly who I'm talking about. I actually don't. All those little girls that you surrounded yourself with in middle school. You <laughs> know exactly who I'm talking about. Regardless. I miss Eddie, and it's going to be sad that he's gone. Um, I am having a lot of fun, though, seeing Joseph Quinn talk about, like, how much he wants the Duffer Brothers to somehow bring him back in season five. He said that when he got the script, he didn't get the last, like, they didn't get the last page of the script, like, later on. And then he was, like, he was, like, in the process of, like, um, learning how to play Master Puppets on the guitar when he got the final pages of the script. And his response to it, he was, like, are you serious? And the Duffer Brothers were, like, yeah. And he was, like okay <laughs> like he was pissed yeah, yeah and rightfully so i would be as well yeah i'd be pretty upset and i bet the duffer brothers regret it and if not we'll make them regret it what was your favorite part of the season my favorite part was probably when hopper picked up the sword and then like you could hear the epic uh running up that hill music starting to play in the background and um mixed with the stranger things theme yeah correct i listen to that remix on youtube all the time now it's sick right <laughs> mm-hmm. i'm gonna play right now yeah well, I don't want to get copyright. I don't think it would yeah. be copyrighted. Well, it'd just take too much time to pull it up. They know what it sounds like. It's pretty okay. sick. Okay. Yeah. If you've seen the episode, it's on YouTube. That's a good part as well. My favorite part is when Eddie plays the guitar. Great moment. You've been rewatching it every morning, right? I literally watch it like five times a day. Yeah. Every time it shows up on my Twitter feed, I have to watch the whole thing through. Yeah. Yeah. Or else I feel like a fraud. For sure. Um, but yeah, like sr- season four was fantastic. And like I'm s- truly like kind of devastated that we have to wait so long for the next one but i think it's going to be a really fun journey um like what do we talk about now though you know what i mean like do we have to go back to talking about marvel yeah i kind of wanted to talk about that for a second and be like i'm burnt out guys marvel sucks dude marvel doesn't suck yes it does i'm burnt out on the mcu you guys know this was a, a an mcu heavy podcast for a long time and i talked about the mcu for a long time we're called the unusual couple for christ's sake like I'm wearing a Spider-Man shirt, but let's be real here. I'm wearing a Star Wars shirt. I am a little disgusted lately <laughs> with uh, the MCU's obsession with quantity over quality. Um, and this this is breaking news. I've never said this online until now. I've talked to people lately. Um, there's video footage of me on this podcast saying I would never turn on a certain movie, and I'm not turning on said movie, but it's been months now, actually half a year since spider-man no way home oh shit and i love the movie but it has fallen on my mcu ranking no way yep it is not my number two mcu movie anymore it's what is like it? price six what yeah what's number two uh and first of all this is my apology to avengers endgame um i was quick to disregard you i'm really sorry <laughs> you are the epic conclusion that we did not even deserve oh my god uh, number one's infinity war number two's endgame number three is probably civil war um, Word. four is still Iron Man and then I'd probably I would consider putting like Spider-Man No Way Home and Guardians are like right there like Spider-Man No Way Home Guardians is fantastic a, no but let's be real and you can't even deny this after watching the movie like six seven times we're just waiting for Toby and Andrew dude yeah like anything before that is all right it's yeah. kind of cringe. cringe a lot of the shit is kind of cringe yeah the thing that's been bothering me about Marvel lately is just like the aftertaste you get every time you watch something that's Marvel like they all have this same sort of 
filter and disposable filter and touch to it where it's like you can tell that this it has marvel's fingerprints all fucking (laughs) over it and that used to be a compliment and now it's not a compliment 100 percent. and thankfully i think you know one thing that they've been doing pretty good lately has been miss marvel but also unfortunately i feel like a big reason why i've been enjoying miss marvel is because people haven't been talking about it as much which is bad for the show but good for me yeah like no one's talking about it at all and i'm Um, enjoying it I haven't even watched the newest episode yet. We've been busy. Yeah. Um, but like when I do watch it, like I enjoy it. Yeah, for sure. It's just like they're putting out so many shows and movies. It's like I don't even know what the point of any of this is anymore. Um, it feels like it's not even in the same universe half the time. And um, yeah. Thor Love and Thunder was uh, was all right to me. At Blase. Best. It was. Yeah, that's. Yeah. Let me look at the. Let me look at the. Yeah, we were again. driving home from the screening and we were like, what is like what? is the word to describe the movie of like bland and like repetitive and stale and predictable and like feels like you're burnt out almost and can't I came blase. up with this really good word I said it's give, it's very much it's giving very blase and then Chris was like what does that mean and I was like you know what I don't know but let me google the definition to make sure I'm correct in my use of it blase unimpressed or indifferent to something because one has experienced or seen it so often before literally marvel it's literally like oversaturation of content and i've seen it so much that i'm not impressed anymore really and it has to be great for me to be impressed Mm -hmm. or excited um thor love and thunder was all right i need marvel to like stop with the bullshit and like really go into more like stylistic choices like what the batman was i hate to you know compare it but like the Batman, obviously, it's not Just a make a movie. It's not a perfect movie. Like the Batman, definitely has flaws. It has long ass runtime. It's it can be hard to sit through because it's so fucking long. But like, I think of the movie The Batman and I think of a bunch of shots in the Batman and I'm like moved by it because it was beautiful. You know what I mean? Like Marvel, it's I, a template. That's what they think they're doing with like Thor: Love and Thunder because like you know the scene where they're like black and white and stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like. It's just not the same. It's it's still very much like. See, it's just giving. There's a I, there's a tweet I sent you. I guess it's a screenshot from a trailer, where it's Thor with a lightning bolt and like it's giving very like YouTube yeah tutorial VFX yeah, type it's energy. Just, it's just it's all so like. It feels like everything's the same to the point where it's starting to drive me insane. And yeah. I'm like getting really burnt out on watching the content. Um, but and I don't like, know how long I can keep this up. Like I, but I think like it's, I was fine with two movies a year. It's what we have to talk about though, because it's what we do now. Unfortunately. No. And it's not like I don't hate it. It's just like, I want greatness from movies and like DC's put out Peacemaker and the Batman this year, which are great. And like, we got stranger things and, and Ozark and the boys is elite. And it's like, why can't we get Marvel putting out quality entertainment like this? And it's just, I don't know what the next project that's going to be that high quality is, but we have Comic Con this this uh, this month, so maybe we'll get a good look at something. True, I'm like con- I'm concerned for myself now personally. Like I don't know what content I'm going to make now that Stranger Things is over. It sucks, right? <laughs> I don't like I don't know what to do because I don't want to go back to because like Marvel. I I just I'm passionate about Stranger Things more than I am like you are too yeah. more of like than I haven't felt a passion for this something like this in a long time for mm-hmm. like a piece of media and so like. I'm keeping it alive. Like, fuck fuck not posting about it. I'm keeping it alive. I'm doing, uh, I think with my friend Trevor, I think we're going to do like a weekly dive into every episode of the show, starting at the beginning and going all the way to, like, we're going to, and that'll stretch like 30 something weeks. So that'll take up a lot of the time until we get the first trailer. <laughs> so <laughs> I need this in my life. And we'll, we're literally going to do updates every single time we get an update on the show. We're going to try and go to filming locations while they're filming. Like, we're going to be keeping, yeah. the, we're going to keep Stranger Things alive. It's Word. not going anywhere, but like we're gonna keep that going. Me, we're gonna you, keep that fire. And Jenna. Pit. Yeah. <laughs> anyone anyone who wants to I have to do a Jenna mention yeah, every podcast episode. I almost missed this one. Yeah. Um but Love you, Jenna. Stranger Things season four was a hell of a ride. Um we're still <laughs> gonna do Stranger Things segments on here. Oh. Yeah, this Eddie Funko Pop now is worth like hundred and fifteen as crazy. of today on the Funko app. Yeah, that's insane. We have two of them. That is true. Word. Yeah. Wild. I wonder if the Max one's gone up at all. I didn't look at it. Who knows? What about the little Max figgy figure? The, uh, oh, the what question. are they called? The mystery minis? Mystery minis. Yeah. Funko Pops are fun. I wonder if we need Eddie's to do a Stranger Things up. Funko Pop collection video because we have a shit ton of them. This is true. The Max one's at 80 now. Nancy's also at 80. Wow. Yeah, they Eddie's little value. figure's at 80. Yeah. yeah. Not 80, sorry, 60. I'm yeah, they're all going up in value. Robin went up to 45. Yeah, I'm glad that we got a, we bought a bunch of these before the Steve's season. Steve's at 40. Yeah, we bought a bunch of these Stranger Things Pops before the 37. season on purpose. We stocked up. We don't have any Billies. We need to get a Billy. 
um, as fireworks go off. It's oh, Fourth of July outside, but there's a bunch we still need to get. We have the Hopper Joyce two pack from season four in the mail where he's the flamethrower. So true. They need to do a Comic Con exclusive in with the sword. I'd be all over that shit. I need a Comic Con exclusive just like this, but it's Eddie with, with the, the Ma- Michael, Myers? Michael Myers mask. Yeah, I cool. need that. That'd be super cool. I can't think cool? of any other piece of media that I'm ex- as excited for as Stranger Things five. Like, not even the Barbie movie. Dude. Percy ja- <laughs> Percy Jackson for me when it comes out eventually the one thing that's i'm the reason i'm not excited for it is disney plus i have faith disney plus is ass i have faith in rick rick's not we'll gonna see. let it be bad yeah, i honestly i'm not holding back if i don't like it because i'm not attached to the franchise so if okay, it sucks well, you I have to be you're it. gonna have to be careful <laughs> i will you're gonna have to be careful it. around me so yeah. but i think that does it for this episode i think so yeah i got a dry mouth i'm actually gonna be out of the country not a country out of the country <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll be across the country. I'll be in California all this upcoming week. When this episode drops, I'll be in California. So expect a lot of like live streams with my boy Trevor, some content. Word. We're going to be doing a ton of MCU vids. So uh, I'm not an exclusive Stranger Things content creator, but I am going to keep that fuel going as well. <laughs> Unfortunately. Yeah. Got to talk about other things too. We can talk about the boys later. We'll do a boys at maybe one day. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, that's pretty much it. <gasps> for this one i have to do that every time too um stranger things you know we love that i hope you guys if you have listened to our stranger things content stick around for all of our other stuff because we talk about marvel dc star wars all the other i fandoms swear as we're well. fun love you guys <laughs> catch y'all next week yep like button comment your thoughts on season four prediction season five leave us a nice review on all the other places follow us on instagram follow us on tiktok we need a couple podcasts across the board we have a lot more to say and a lot more to talk about we'll probably go thor love and thunder next week and uh, some other things, predictions for the future of Stranger Things every week, little updates on it, a Stranger Things segment maybe. But thank you guys so much. You've killed it with support early. Help us get to 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. Word. Follow us on Instagram. Help us get to 1,000 followers over there. Word. I'm going to go drink some water, Word. pack a bag, and go to sleep because I have to wake up like 3 a.m. to go to an airport. Word. Three, two, one. Stay, Stay unusual. unusual.